Hey guys, it's Matt Core from controlpaint.com. And today we're just gonna talk about how to make tricky selections easy and fast. So a situation like this is something I find myself in all the time. Originally, this had many layers, but the document as it currently stands is a background layer, and then everything else is on a single layer. Well, what if I want to separate all of these knights from the grid and from the numbers? There's a bunch of different ways to approach this, of course, one of which is to go in here and use some sort of selection tool and then shift select and then you can add to that selection and you could do this down all these different guys that would work the problem is if you make a single click you lose your selection i think when we make really complicated selections with the marquee tool the risk is that we get almost finished and then something messes up so let me propose an alternative which all hinges on the fact that if I have a fill of any sort, like this rectangle here, it's on its own layer, at any time I can control click on the layer's thumbnail and pull that selection right back up. So instead of creating the selection out of the lasso tool or out of the marquee tool, I'm actually going to build the selection out of shapes. Now to make this one step easier, I'm gonna make all those shapes in a single group. The way I'll do that is I'll make a group drag it inside, and then I'm gonna just lower the transparency of the group itself down to about halfway. Now, note that each individual layer is still 100% opacity. Cool, now we are set up. So with the Move tool selected, I'm just gonna hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and clone copies. I'm not gonna try and get it perfect here. As you'll see, we'll be able to fix it in a minute, but I'm just gonna get it as close as I can. Remember, I'm avoiding getting these numbers covered up although sometimes it's gonna be unavoidable. And when I get one row finished, if I'm happy with the way that's looking, I can actually just click and shift click so I select all of these layers, and then I can hold down Alt and clone all of them at the same time. And I'm gonna do that one more time here. Now you'll notice that some of these guys are just different sizes, some are in slightly different positions, it's not so easy as just making a perfectly repeating grid and then turning that into a selection. So I'm gonna clone these one last time here. And then with the move tool selected, I can hold down control and it'll select the layer I click. Just a quick way to select one of these layers without worrying about them being named. And I can adjust now. So here I can adjust that to fit. Now here I wanna make sure I avoid this 19 so I could kind of move it up a bit. But then I have a problem because I can't get his feet. Well, it's really not a problem. What I can do is actually clone this again and then just kind of shrink it down to be a smaller piece. So now I have little extra rectangles to work with. So I might want to move this one up a bit so I avoid getting that 18 and then just grab this other one and clone it, clone it again. So here I'm just piecing together with rectangles, making sure I have full coverage. And I can take as long as I want with this because unlike a selection, I can't risk losing it. But here I'm really just dragging rectangles around and using the free transform tool. So clearly the important shortcuts to understand are the basic navigation tools, as well as being able to use the move tool and the free transform tool very smoothly. Now that I'm pretty sure I've got everybody covered up correctly, and none of the numbers are covered up, I need to convert these shapes into a selection. The way I like to do this generally is to just duplicate this whole group just to give myself a safe copy in case things go wrong. And then with my original, I'm gonna make it 100% again. And then with Control E, I'll flatten it into a single layer. And the reason I need it to be a single layer is because here I can Control click on the layers thumbnail, and here I have a selection. Once I have a selection, now I can do lots of stuff with it. I could make a mask, I could invert the selection and delete, and that would just get rid of all the extra stuff without harming these knights. But it was getting to this selection that would have been the time-consuming part with other methods. So I don't necessarily want you to think of this as being related to a grid or things that are rectangular in nature, but rather that this is just one more approach to make a selection. Because as you've seen, there are tons of different ways to make selections. But what I really like about this method is that I can kind of manipulate each of these pieces individually, which strikes a great balance because of the repetition involved, 
and the fine tuning that I can do on each little element. So I encourage you to keep an eye out for when you can use selection building to your advantage. Thanks for coming to the site.